Buying a car in 2024 stinks. You've probably looked about buying one and said, man, that car would look good with some coilovers, some wheels, and exhaust. And after dreaming up what you would do to a GR86, you look at the price tag and you get a little bit down in the dumps about not being able to afford this brand new car. But even used ones are a ton of money. But what if I was able to tell you that there's a cheap way about modifying your car without it actually looking cheap? Today, I'm gonna give you five crucial tips towards modifying your car on a budget and then three things to massively stay away from. I'm Alex, Alex Martini with two underscores on Instagram. And today, we're talking talking about how to modify your car the cheapest way possible, but still the right way. Welcome to Martini Works, where we help people mod their car the right way. From our site, you can pick up wheels, mount them with tires, and then get them balanced and mounted for free. We have new products on the site like Rohana wheels, we've got Raisin Volk, and BC Racing, along with like build now, pay later options. But let's be clear, today's video is about getting into the scene, getting into this community without having to take out a massive home loan. Modifying your car for cheap can be a bit of an oxymoron because doing it well doesn't usually correspond to doing it cheaply. So what do you do? Number one, before you do any of it, you need to ask yourself these three crucial questions. What do I want to do with the car? Okay, number two, if I was to go cheap on a certain area of the car I build, what would it be? And number three, which would probably be number one, is my car ready for car mods? The first one has so many options. You can build it to just be a clean daily driver, an occasional track day car, a drift car, autocross, drag car, or all of it and above. But the goal here is to really find one to two key things that you really want the car to be able to do. And I'm gonna be honest, turning it on and taking it to school and back without causing issues is one thing. Now for me, I want my car to have a good sound and have a solid fitment on the wheels and tires. So I don't mind too much about having a ton of power or having like a race car interior, especially in my daily driver. My Nissan Gloria still has the stock seats and I drift that thing every month and people wonder why and the answer is because I don't want to sacrifice just cruising it around town. Now, if you want us to go into details about certain things that we've made sacrifices on our own cars, go check out the Martini Works podcast where me, Dakota, and Gels talk about it for like an hour and a half. You can find it on all podcast channels plus YouTube at Martini Works Podcast. Now, with that being said, saying there's some places where the dollar goes super far, way farther than anything else. Number one, coilovers. Number two, wheels. Number three, exhaust. And number four, really weird one, window tint. It's just my opinion, but let me explain. Finding where you can save a few bucks is fair. And to be honest, everyone does it. Knowing where you're willing to take a shortcut on your budget and still make a car look and feel pretty good is a really great way to keep you focused on building a car that's right for you. Let's talk about tires, for instance. Now, Continental is usually what we recommend, but there's another brand called General Tire. It's about 15% cheaper. It's a touch louder on the inside, but you still get a lot of the same technology and reliability that Continental does. The General Tire G-Max R S is about 15% cheaper and it's a lovely set of rubbers to save you a lot of headache. Now with wheels, we launched the wheel verifier tool last month, which lets you see if a wheel design is a replica design, an inspired by design, or an original wheel design. And we pissed off every single person that makes wheels in a good way. You deserve to know. The powers that be would tell you that you have to buy an original designed wheel, but you don't. What matters more is having a car you can have fun with and how a wheel is built is just as important, if not more so than the design elements of the wheel. So instead of just buying a random $4,000 set of Volks because your friends told you to, find yourself a Koenig set for $900 or stage wheels if you want some fancy chrome wheels for $1,200. Some top picks for us, if you have a Mustang or a big domestic car, Rohana RC10s are a banging set of affordable wheels. If you've got a Nissan, Toyota, Mitsubishi, we've seen a ton of success on stage wheel nights. Plus, you can save money by packaging tires with wheels at Martini Works with the balancing and mounting. Do it or I'm calling ICE. Now, all while doing this, you should probably make sure your car is ready for modifications. This is the part nobody actually wants to do. I don't want to do it. That's why both my cars are on jack stands. Now, getting your car ready to be re reliable with fluid flushes, replacing damaged bits and bushings, and getting it on that like start line of Monopoly feels like you're getting your hair cut. You don't always want to go do it, but once it's done, you feel nice. We recommend always replacing things that need to be replaced with aftermarket options that are objectively better. Examples, brakes, rotors, bushings. But if you got bad bushings with cool wheels, it's still gonna ride like a bag of shit. 
So try to keep that in mind, especially with suspension components, that that's gonna be what you feel when you're driving. The second tip, don't project creep your car. I've been there. Trust me. You start tearing into your engine bay, going to clean it, and you say, oh, I could get a new ground wire kit. Ooh, I could get a new intake. Maybe I could get those R8 injectors for my TT. Those are cool. Then I could tell everybody that I have R8 injectors. Don't do that, all right? Those bills climb fast, and they usually don't do much for you, except leave your car on jack stands even longer. The point of being a car person is to drive your car. So stick to your plan first, and you'll save loads from not buying stuff you don't need. In the world of upsells, be the guy or gal that gets like water and not the meal at McDonald's. You don't think it makes a big difference? I promise you it does. Now, mods can also be just making things nicer, which is our third tip. I can't even begin to explain how nice a clean OE Plus build is. Jump online and you'll see some awesome deals and videos on how to clean up paint, glass, plastics, and interior. That sort of stuff is huge because when you buy a car, there's a lot of good stuff in it already. Learn that because it's so huge. Now for us, Melco detailing products are typically what we use as well as over car care. Detailing rags, I always buy on sale because I feel like it's all a scam and I only get it when they're running a special. Number four, doing things yourself is an awesome idea, but get yourself time. A tint job done yourself is gonna be a disaster if you try to rush it. So taking your time and learning at your own pace is awesome because if you mess it up, paying somebody $140 an hour in labor for a shop to do it instead is lame. That's why we do the mounting and balancing when you buy wheel and tire packages. So then all you need to do is throw them on the car. That goes with a lot of things. You can test things out and try things out, but don't rush it. Some things to keep your car build cheap on the do it yourself list is gonna be some really basic stuff, but save the $10 weekly wash at the gas station and do it yourself. You don't need the oil change extended coverage from the dealership. Snag a $20 oil catch can and do it yourself. You don't need an exhaust shop to install your exhaust unless you're welding something. A jack with a few jack stands and some elbow breeze with a buddy and you'll nail it all yourself. But invest in an exhaust hanger tool for like $20, that's a lifesaver. Brake pads and rotors are super easy with so many incredible creators like Engineering Explained and Chris Fixit explaining what these things do and how to replace them easily. You don't get peace of mind when you build your own car. So don't buy things that promise that from people who try to take advantage of you. Get peace of having money for Taco Bell when you do your own coolant flush because it's your only car and that's all you can afford. Five, when you're trying to find small things to just make the car yours, which is what it's all about. Find it in the things you interact with on the car and then what it looks like. Shift knob, same thing. A good weighted shift knob doesn't need to be an $80 likewise shift knob. It can be a $25 one that just feels Nice. When you're building a car on a budget, you're not building it to brag about the brands you bought. You're doing it so you can enjoy it to the fullest that you can. But just because you're not buying for brand doesn't necessarily mean that you're buying parts. Falling into these traps is so easy. So here are the top three things that I would recommend you stay away from. Number one, buying one thing for your car and not having any money left for the rest of your car. Number two, buying something for clout almost never works long term. And number three, Plasti Dip odds of it being good to not good on your first time is one to 50. So if you are going to do it, take your time. So how do you modify a car for cheap? Easy, baby. You steal all the quarters from your uncle's Jeep like you did when you were 10 and and you get a car with these two things. Number one, good paint. Number two, manual. From there, you're not gonna plasti dip the whole thing and you're not gonna throw a huge chassis mount wing on it and go broke. And instead, you're going to build a nice clean example of a car that can do anything by investing in a set of affordable but still good tires. Like General G-Max RSs instead of Michelins, Koenigs versus work wheels, Tane coilovers instead of BC Racings. And you're gonna dial in perfect fitment while saving mounting and balancing costs because you got it from Martini Works or I'm calling FEMA. And from there, you're gonna spend the rest of your time doing mods and preventative maintenance yourself because you need to save money because you don't have any of it. And that's the fun part about building a car. Clean up your foggy headlights, fix your leaky windowsills, and learn to wax your car so that you can make that OEM paint shine because there is nothing better than a clean OE Plus build on a budget that looks like it just rolled off the showroom floor because clean, minimal builds always trump excessive messy mods on just generally sh 
cars. It just works, but modifying it the right way a lot of times takes a little extra time, and making mistakes is usually really, really expensive. But most importantly, when you go to modify your cheap car, you do it with the folks that give a shit. We have car parts for every budget, and although we want to like dump a ton of cash on cars, it doesn't always work out that way. Just because you're on a budget though, doesn't mean your build needs to look like it. Build it right, take it slow, invest in the right things, and don't let your friends bully you when they're paying $350 a month on their 34% interest rate for the turbo kit they just bought for the 350,000 mile Nissan 350Z. Call them a dork, have fun with your car, enjoy it, drive it, and let us know what you think we missed. I'm Alex Martini. Let me know what you think we should talk about below, and thanks for watching.